things will fun. Fun doesn't have to mean drinking, partying, smoking, watching football and the like. Fun can be a night alone, studying your Bible, reading a book, having a deep conversation, washing plates, playing music or even sleeping. Bro, it's your fun. You define it. Follow me. We want to see your power manifest. Born in the late 80s in Ogun State, Shagam Saleoko to be precise. Uh, I feel like every time I want to talk about who MC Relax really is, I'm always close to tears. I don't know why I'm always extremely emotional. Because I had a very humble beginning and I'm so extremely humble. That's why you can check my height. I'm a very humble person. Extremely humble. <laughs> okay, so um, I, um, I'd say that, you know, I went to school. Okay, I'm a graduate. And I, I was very good. I studied statistics. I, I think I finished best five in my department or thereabout. It was extremely good. And I'm a media personality, content creator. Uh, I shoot content, both um, secular and you know both kingdom content. Secular, you know, for business and you know uh, kingdom content because we still need to you know give the people uh, the kingdom culture and that's the only way we can or that's one of the ways by which we can instill that in our society i like to be perceived as someone who's always excited who's always happy why because i remember where god picked me from mommy timothy are you there you know that kind of stuff i know where god picked me from and you know i, I just always want to look at the good and the positive side of of my life and so anywhere you find me you always find the energy king that someone is always excited happy i mean what's there not to be happy, happy about god has been so good to me i'm a father a husband a mentor to some people i don't even know even me i need mentoring <laughs> you know that kind of thing but that's who i am so like i said earlier i want to be perceived as someone who is a very happy person because you know god loves me a lot and i let the world see that god loves me so that's MC Relax in a nutshell. Thank you. I had a very funny growing up, extremely funny. So I'll not say, I'll not say that uh, I'm now doing it. I've always done media all my life, from when I knew myself. I've not done anything. Maybe, I I've not done anything. So you know, growing up. I didn't even know that we suffered. <laughs> I didn't know that that was what they called suffering because I grew up a happy kid. I was always happy, always happy. And the uniqueness of my growing up was, you know, I didn't grow up with my parents being together. We're a family of four, uh, excluding my parents. So because my parents were six. So I think the longest time that I remember my father and my mother being together, the longest would be a year. And that was when, you know, they came together to give birth to our last one, which is my younger brother. So, you know, they married, gave birth to our first born, separated, came back again, gave birth to the second born, went their ways, came back again, gave birth to me, went for eight years, and they came back to give birth to the last born. So it was always me, and my dad was, because he's late now, rest in peace, dad. Uh, my dad was a taxi driver. So he was always in Isale Oko garage. Many people that know Shagam will know this. He was always in the Isale Oko garage, and then if you know taxi drivers, they have to have left the house for like say 5.30. So that would have gone to a garage early in the morning and he's meant to be back 10 p.m. or 10.30. So uh, uh, I had a very different kind of growing up because, you know, my brother was with my mom. My sister is way older, so she's a ha she's hot at the house. She's probably somewhere with one of the uncles, you know, maybe because she wants to go to the university or something, you know. So it was always me at home. And at the time that I'm talking about, my younger brother was not yet born. So it was always me at home. I, I grew up early. You know, I, I know my life from KG2. Many people don't know what happened to that. My, from KG2, I knew myself from KG2. Because I had to go to school alone. You know, you get passed through the express. Not express majorly, but you know, a major road cross, go to Remo Secondary School. Um, no, sorry, that's Remo Secondary School. No, I didn't go to RSS. No offense, but I mean, <laughs> Remo Kindergarten, yeah, that's the primary school. So, you know, in my school, 
I became the leader of cultural group or the dance group, I think from primary three. I've been dancing from maybe primary one, but primary three, I became the leader of all cultural dance groups. That's Yoruba Ibo Aousad, and I was the greatest actor in the state. Because we usually have this coming together of different schools to do a yearly stuff. I was the, I was, so I was, the, I was quite popular, everybody knew me. Second term is usually the prize giving day. So you know prize giving day, best student in this, best student in that. It's only me that all everybody will know because I'm not I'll dance all the dance, I'll dance cultural custom. And you know, <laughs> they were, my school fees were not usually paid. So, you know, the funny thing is maybe during cultural dance, they will spring a lot of money. The parents, I mean sorry, the teachers, you know how they will do in primary school, they will pack. You people should stop this thing. If you are still doing it till now, all primary schools. You know those dance cultural group, uh, they will spray, 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 spray me. They will pack everything, I will not see anything. If you even pack the money, and you know that this boy does not pay school fees, you now pack it and use it to pay my school fees, maybe it will be good. Well, when I resume the term, people will now call debtors, come out, you know, beat us. Now I'm saying, parents, listen to your children, we are the leader of tomorrow, try to pay our school fees. Uh, but the money, it's not fair. So, you know, my mom was not around, my dad was in the garage, but he has to work. So, you know, none of my parents will come to my school when I'm dancing, everyone will be shouting. Parents are more da. Where is his father? Where is his mother? Nobody knows anybody, but you know, it's just quite popular. So that's what I've always done. I entered secondary school, which is the best secondary school in the world, Mayflower Secondary School world. I mean, life is totally different right there. And you know, I became popular instantly the first night in my hostel, Beto Hop. You can't remember. So that's where I, I got my uh, nickname Relax from Mayflower Secondary School. That was the year 2000, uh, the millennium, you know. When we entered school, I was just. I was TV, I was in the, you know, in the hostel in the night. So many younger ones were crying. Hey, hey, me, I was just excited. Ah, it's time to leave home. I was so, you know, and <laughs> some of the seniors just gathered. See, oh, there's one here that is not crying, you know. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? I just, ah, uh, I just gathered all of them and I was giving them for a brief, serious war. So in my primary school, I was a senior prefect, I was a labor prefect, I was everything prefect. I represented school everywhere. And they said, wow, wow, wow. So immediately I just became the school son of almost all the seniors. Everybody wanted to be my school father. So, you know, because of, it, of the energy that I had, I mean, that I had, I would always run here, prr, run here, prr. if you see me, I'm not walking, I'm always jumping. So, all the seniors just used the word, relax now, hey, relax. Relax. So people heard relax more than they heard my name. So nobody knew my name. They just know oh, that boy that they used to say relax, relax, relax for. That's how I got relax. And so from GS1, everybody started calling me relax, relax, relax. And then you know, later on, I just started using, okay, let me just add NC to it and then NC relax. I've been hosting events from, from GS1. I joined literary debating club, press club, all the clubs that was in school, you know, representing schools and all that. It's been like that for me. So I've known my life. I've been doing shows in the Shimi Hall, collecting 50 50 Naira from way back. That's how I paid some of my tuitions. That's how I, I, I fed myself going through secondary school. So I feel like my, my parents, really, they just know that I'm here. I brought a lot of joy to the family, a lot, because, you know, some of my, um, maybe my friend is working on the road. Somebody will just call them and say, Hey, let me be my money. Yes, I'm giving you a man key or that. Like, he greets people a lot, all this kind of thing. So, you know, I don't fight, I'm fight scared, I'm always excited, I'm a happy person, so it's been like that for me. So my parents, if you say, did they support me? It's, it's not someone that is at home that will support you. It's not someone that, nobody checks anybody's results. Nobody, I'm very, <laughs> you just knew you want to be something for your life, you get, because nobody was there. And I don't blame anybody, because they too, they, they just had to, you know, they had to pay the fees, the house fee, and stuff. I grew up early. There's some things I must say. Hey, I grew up really early. We want to see your power manifesting now. We want to glorify her to invade our atmospheres. We want to. Yeah, so in the Old Testament, um, the, the Old Testament had uh, a major way of living. And it was that uh, there were laws for everything. And so in the New Testament, the difference in the law now is that um, there are righteous requirements of the law. So, meaning that to everybody now, the Holy Spirit is now the law in your heart. It tells you the things, it shows you the line. There are some things that I might like trousers and 
They say, oh, you don't wear trousers. They say, oh, you don't do this, don't do that. But these are not stringent laws to everybody. It's now a personal issue. So I have my own personal consecration with God, uh, where God says, for some things that I do, I remember there's a particular thing I used to say at event, maybe at after party, I'm trying to hype, and then I, I, I say a particular word. For like three, four times, Holy Spirit has warned me never to say it. That never, I don't want to hear that from your mouth again. And I say, oh, so, no problem. So sometimes at an event, you know, that's the only thing you can say that, well, uh, I'm not meant to say this, so you, you, you cut it short, you cut it away. Then, you know, uh, before I became serious with God, um, one of the things that I had was, now this one is hereditary. Ladies usually love us. Oh how, how, oh, how the virgins love you. I love Shano. So you know you have a lot of girls. It, it comes with entertainment. You have a lot of people that like you. A lot of people in your DM. People send you messages. Even before there was DM, there's been from primary, secondary, university. It's been like that. There's been a lot of, you know, people that just flock around you and all that. But I travel a lot for events. And for entertainers, I mean secular entertainers, one of the requirements, I should be saying this, and then people that know you know, one of the requirements of secular entertainers is when they are bringing you over to a town, they secure your um, your transportation, your flight, uh, your accommodation. In that accommodation, one of the preparations they make is that there has to be days that they have to bring to your room. Yes, every secular entertainment understand, entertainers understand that. So you know, you have a lot of things that you have to say no to. Oh God, don't bring anybody to my. Are you okay? No, you know so. And then you have a log of um, brother train that are ready, that probably even lodged in the same hotel that you're lodged. And they're like, it's relax, you're in what room? And then you have to say no. So, a scripture that God gave me is that, that like, hits me because the only way God solves all man's problems is just to show you uh, a deeper dimension of God. The more He shows you, the more your problems become solved. So, He showed me Hebrews um, 11, and then He told me that. Don't think that uh, there's going to be a power on you that will help you not to do things like this. No. So he showed me the scripture. And the scripture says about, you know, says finding about some people that he said, um, if these people have, he said if they have put to heart the town or the kingdom where they came from, they would have had the opportunity to go back. Say, but they desiring a better resurrection. So what that means is, every day the door will always be open. You are the one that is going to choose not to go that way. It has to be a deliberate decision in your heart that this door is open. So so that you don't think it's a temptation because this temptation will always be there. And every day you have to wake up and say no. Every day you wake up and you say no. Oh, this opportunity comes again. You say no. I'm very practical, so I'm going to say this. Sometimes you're hosting an event, and while you're hosting it, you know, because I do energy, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. And so some guys are trying to come and try to give you bomb bomb, and then maybe your hand eats one of them bomb bomb. Bah! Yeah, it happens. And then your mind will play fast one of you that. Ah! What's going on? Maybe. Or more, you have an opportunity after the event. This one, if you just tell her to give you your number, last one, she will almost die. You don't know what it means to. What it means to. There's a difference between if you want to go and fornicate. That means you will have to do a lot. You will try. You will go out. You will talk to a lady. You will stress. You will spend money. That's work. And when. <laughs> if you do mistake and say, can you meet me up? Before you finish typing it. You, you know, these things are always, the door is always open. And then you have to wake up every day and say no. Do you understand? So, and that's where grace comes. Grace comes to, to, for you. If, if you're ready to obey God, grace will back you. Grace is always ready to back you. So, but you have to say no first. So, I mean, that's, that's just where God helps me. It, it makes me understand that if I go this way, I'm not going to get to the coming land. I remind myself of it. There's something I'm meant to be. There's, there's something I'm meant to represent in this kingdom, in this world. You need to always put your mind to God. My God always shows me. What does being a Christian have to do with 
not betting. Ah, I wonder. The fact that I'm a Christian doesn't mean I can't bet now. The issue is that this Mr. Righteous is ganging up against our so called beautiful one. See, we must understand that drinking and maybe money, they are controlled by his spirit. If you can be consistent enough, You'll be joined by his spirit. And before you know it, you are already gone. I guess it's love at first sight. I can't start a relationship based on feelings. Because if you are to start a lot of So we we all say we're Christians. And you need to understand that for some people, Christianity is just when they say they are Christians, what they mean is that when there is a form that they need to feel. And uh, they say religion, they used to put Christian. They, you know, it's Bible says the circumcision is of the heart. Do you understand? We are of the circumcision that was with God in the spirit, we just in Christ Jesus, and we have no confidence in the flesh. That's um, Philippians 3 3. That's important because we have no confidence in the flesh. And this is why I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't easily judge people. I have a lot of people that say they are Christians, but, uh, okay, for example, we to be on one set. Uh, this movie was recently nominated in the AMBC. So there was some one of my guys. I don't know, of course, I'm not going to mention his name. You know, we were lodged in the same place, and the role that I'm meant to play is I'm meant to see the lady. Maybe she was she used to be my ex. So I'm meant to see her hunger and actually really press her, you know, kind of thing. I told the director ah, I'm not going to do all that that you say that you do, and that me, yeah, I'm going to modify it, but that I know what you want to achieve. You just want to achieve like a connection so that people know that we've dated before. So I meant to probably quickly hug her, kiss her, press her, all these kind of things. I said no, but what I'm going to do is that I'm probably just going to create that impression, but now there's not going to be any pressing and stuff like that. So said it's fine. So when I was talking to my friend that is also a Christian, because the person I meant to do that with is, is a huge celebrity. Fine babe, known very well. And this other, my friend also is a huge celebrity also. So he was like, relax. I'm taking you very soon, so I don't want to make anybody name. Hey? So, hey. So, the guy said, relax. Take this opportunity to make you friends. You know my friends. Hey! Oh boy! If they give me the opportunity to last. I don't really think I need last thing, God. You know even the looks. <laughs> it's not even the secrecy. The world will watch it. Ah! Hey, oh shit. So you're not even... So, I've seen a lot. A lot of my people who... You know? The flesh plays a fast one. And that's the reason why I cannot... I cannot condemn or judge anybody. Because I know I am also there. I, I, I see the temptation. And I know that if God is not helping you, you'll be there. You know, you, you've heard a lot of Christians, even big ones that you've known, you've respected, you've seen news that happen, that this say that say this thing happen. I am not gonna be part of the people that are gonna you see it's easy to judge when you are not on the field. If you are right there and you know what goes on, trust me. So that's why. A lot of people, this one that I said in the world, the secular, the food babe for you in the room. Ah, I have people now that it goes, it goes, they, they, they are doing it now, it goes steady. My, my producer will tell me, relax, ah, not only you know they do them now, see they talk. In fact, let's even say that's even, even things around money, money, paroles, like maybe you work for uh, a TV station that you're not meant to collect money to play people's videos, that kind of thing, like it's just against the company. I get a lot of guys, Christians, where they run the paro now, they collect money, and they are making a lot of money. So for you to stand and say, no, I've been here for like seven years, and nobody can point to me and say, I've collected one naira. And you know fully well, that this money, you collect it, you clean out, nothing will happen. This kind of money, I'm serious, it's a lot, this is what I'm just saying now, there's a lot of money, especially where, you know, I happen to function. So a lot of people are making a lot of money. I'm talking millions. But and then you're like, no, I'm sorry, I don't do things like that. So I you see people that are doing it. So if I now stand and I'm saying, yeah, the idea is not say this one, they call themselves Christians. They call themselves Christians, you are doing this. Uh, I would say, let heed that thing stand. Let him take heed. Let's see for 
then another scripture says that it says when you are correcting somebody so do it in the spirit of love with meekness knowing that hey, you too so every time you see a temptation that your brother is going through <laughs> is they are actually they are taking and you are the one that is there in front of you what they are doing is that they are taking permission from your hand because you are next so the way you treat that person is the same way that will determine whether they should bring the same temptation your way or that you have passed so i can pass by the mercy that i show someone that is currently going through the same issue if i have passed that means me to have gone through it and now you don't need to come and tempt me it's because all things being equal all of us we mess up with the grace of god it's not back us shine on me let the light of your glory ah what love will just do i don't know ah because the father of us all, he has not died. This he has been fathering all of us. Praise God. So I don't think father would have changed anything. Uh, apart from maybe you have to always wake up in the midnight. And that's for the early stages where your sleep is tampered with. I know. And apart from that, I've just, you know, I've always had um, a backdrop in my heart, which is nothing is going to change me like that for example they say marriage will change you clinical, clinical, clinical. not necessarily and my idea is you're coming into my life and you're going to become one and so we're going to, of course there's something that you usually do maybe you can travel for long now you have to cut it you have to make sure that you're always available for the family and all that so what i do is anytime i'm around and spending time with you know my baby my two babies. Do you understand? So apart from me, you can't just go like kite that does not have Oko at the back. Tell somebody that I understand you're about to explain that to you. So but apart from that, my baby is chilled. Energy princess, she doesn't stress anybody. She's having fun. And she enjoys maybe just six months, you know? And she's and she enjoys we sitting together. So maybe I'll take her. On my life. Even if I'm playing games with all my friends, as long as, as, long as I'm one kind, like, she's fine. She's not crushing on anything. She's not be watching. This is that small, but she's watching as I play it. They're enjoying it. If I'm watching anything, she will stay there with me. She will watch it. But if she's alone, then she will watch all her listener kids or better kids, all these kind of things. But nothing, nothing has changed. We're good, we're fine, we're stressed. Everybody does their day. Everybody is individuals. And I promised myself from way back that, um, if you like fighting me that I'm not going to uh, love the love ratio between me, my wife, and my kid. Or uh, let me say my wife and my kid. It will be 80-20. I'm going to love my wife 80%. I'm going to love my wife. And that 20% I'm loving them is 100%. Guess what I'm saying? It's not just 20%. It's, but if you want to ratio it, you see that my wife only 80 uh, Yes, so I would love them. I will give them everything I can. I would, but ah, because that's my wife. That's the one that will always be with me. See this one, but my wife too left her father and mother. She's now with me. And this boy, I know that Louia. When they grow up, you know, remember is this one that I must stay with me forever. Even me, when was the last time I checked on my parents? I mean, face to face. It's now full. Ah, but my wife will know. <laughs> she will stay with me all through. So. Uh, and that's the major mistake that uh, you know parents make at some point in their in their in their life. They turn all the attention to the kids, and they have nothing going on. And so the, the basis of their relationship of their conversation is the kids. And then they start calling themselves mommy, mommy, danjuma, daddy, uh, I want dinner. And so at the end of the day, the kids go to university, and then they start their life. And then the parents find out that there's really nothing. They're just Everything is now transactional. There's no connection. And then it, it's, it's really sad. And that's not going to happen to me by the grace of God. So, Father Wood has been great, but my love life has been intact. 100. So, nothing is strange. Well, thank God. You made the sunshine, moon bloom, head move around, though. Put me in the middle and add some sun. Ah, that's a major question, though. How do I relax? Because my mode of relaxing self is even still <laughs> <it's> the energy. 
So yeah, I think I'm also in the journey of discovering how to properly relax because of the kind of way I am now. Because the way I relax really is I travel, I probably travel to a friend's place where I don't have to think about any responsibility in life, where I can be completely I'm not my coward, just like, you know that kind of thing, where I'm not thinking of anything. You see, in my, in my home, when I wake up, I, I wake up to, to mindset of achieving responsibility, what are the things that I'm meant to do that I've not done, that's what runs through my mind. So I need to move myself to a space where I'm not thinking of anything. I'm just, bleh. Ah, but that's hot these days. I don't have this level of muscle to just go somewhere and be somewhere and all that. But the best, one of the best things I also do is I go to the cinema to go and sleep. That's the best way I sleep. I'm not paying for the movie as soon as they start. Pew! When they are done, they wake me and I'll go. That's how I sleep. That's the best way to sleep. That's the new one. Good movie. And the way I watch movies, I can watch one movie, one, maybe one hour 30 minutes, I can watch for two weeks. Maybe I put it, but the movie has to be interesting to get me to sleep. So I need to get a great movie to sleep. So once I get a movie that, because let me tell you how I relax. I relax when my mind is in something and it's hard. I can see one movie 20 times because I've not seen it. As I'm looking at it, my mind is not there. It cannot have attachment to me at all. In fact, even music, if I'm listening to music, I can listen for music to music from here to Akure. And I'm not listening to anything. So the music has to be something that appeals to my mind. That's when I know that you're actually playing music. So if it's a movie that appeals to my mind, that means my mind will now focus on it. And at that point, my mind will now remember that it's tired. You know, sleep. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> Because even if you say you want to relax with friends and say let's hang out, let's eat fish and just it's not still going to be work because the old friends are relying on you to make the hangout interesting. No. Take me to the movies. Let me sleep. If I ever tell you I'm taking you to the movies, don't know that we want to go and sleep all over. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you, that's how I relax. Yeah. Guys, money is always in the direction of love. A man is always spending in the direction of his love. If he is not spending on you, he does not love you. See, I'm not even talking about a relationship that is based on money only. No, no. All I'm saying is that anywhere you are loving, the next thing should be given. For God so loved the world that he, what? That he gave his only begotten son. If he is not giving you, he does not love you. Most people are...